this solo, of course, is cognate with everything else. That's the sanjiao. Yeah. Suppose the Taoism, Confucianism, and uh, Buddhism. Now, the problem is that the Tanguts probably themselves, this is not the Tango genuine idea. Uh, this is something which they have learned from the Chinese, and it basically emerges uh, in their uh, translated sources. Uh, and the Tanguts themselves didn't really, I think, uh, thought about that uh, uh, thought in the category of uh, three teachings. Now, if we uh, uh, pursue uh, this line a little bit uh, further, uh, then we can see that the actual understanding, uh, I mean, how the Tanguts tended to look uh, at their uh, textual heritage, uh, is such as they tried to uh, arrange it in two major categories, again, yeah? So one would be uh, Mur. Uh, this character basically translates the Chinese Su, basic or common, yeah? And another one uh, will be Shi. Uh, Shi which is Shang. So, uh, there are, according to the Tanguts' own understanding, uh, there are the secular books and the sacred books. Uh, with the sacred books, it's kind of understandable uh, that that category implied uh, mostly Buddhist and probably Taoist. Although we are not quite sure, as we mentioned yesterday, if there actually was a Taoism in Shisha. With this one, uh, it's particularly interesting because uh, uh, this uh, category, yeah, or sometimes it's a uh, souvenir. Uh, uh, Suan, or Sushu, uh, the books. Uh, it emerges a lot in the, uh, uh, in the Tango texts. Now, uh, the funny part is that uh, there is this uh, uh, famous uh, saying which we have mentioned yesterday. It said that deep in the, uh, far in the west, uh, uh, yeah, there is the, uh, high, uh, uh, the highlands of Tibet, and uh, Tibetans, the Bo people, the Bo, uh, they revere Buddhas and monks. Uh, now, if we go to the east, in the lowlands, there is the country of Han, yeah? And in the country of Han, they all like, as Nevsky translated and Profolo, they all like secular literature. But the thing is that if we compare that particular, I mean, the usage, or the context in which this Moor emerges, uh, this doesn't mean uh, uh, that category of secular literature, if we would like to think about it, like, Novels, I don't know, criminal stories, you know, like love stories, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, but this is actually uh, Confucian books. Uh, Confucian texts, and probably they are war, but not necessarily. But Confucian texts, they fall into this category. Uh, whereas the category of uh, Shi, of Shi, yeah, is uh, generally implies uh, Buddhist texts. Uh, so, uh, this is uh, another division, and this is genuine, yeah, this is how the Tanguts really looked at that, yeah, we derived that uh, directly uh, from the actual texts. And there is, is, but this is again not the end of it, yeah, because uh, there was no word for religion or teaching, I mean, the chi was a very uh, widely used uh, word, this uh, chi, the Dharma. Uh, another very important thing, and something which I think uh, we should uh, be uh, concerned with, uh, I mean, the ones who are either interested or would like to embark onto that road of the Tango studies, is the problem of ritual. Because we have a number of words uh, which imply uh, ritually, yeah, in Chinese, uh, in Tango, but uh, two of these words, uh, they form a very stable pair. Uh, one character is this, uh, 
uh, in a simplified manner, it reads chi. Uh, we have talked, and the other one we have mentioned yesterday, it's, it is zo. If we analyze these things, these two characters, then we'll actually see uh, that this particular one, yeah, is in a way related to the dharma character, which we have mentioned, to the chi, right? They say that you say they have the right part here together, similar one. Yeah. Uh, now this one right here, this right part, those characters, they are probably related uh, to another one, uh, which uh, is this. Achi. And this character implies uh, the Chinese, uh, uh, that is Xi, uh, uh, I think. Uh, and it translates the Chinese shirt to hold, to maintain. Uh, this is all, in a way, it's a little bit, some guesswork too, but uh, nonetheless. Now this one here, this particular element, uh, uh, is often used uh, in the Chinese borrow borrowings, and here it represents the uh, equivalent of junk. So basically this one, this character, which means ritually, uh, means that somebody has to uphold something which is right. Therefore, this character, which we translate as qi fa, yeah, or jiao, teaching, yeah, it basically doesn't have any specific uh, connotation, Buddhist, Taoist, or whatsoever. Uh, this is just something which has to be maintained, or man something which has to be maintained properly. It's law in a very, very general sense. I mean, that's my understanding, of course. Uh, it's, of course, one can change that. That's no big deal. Now, this one means something which should, uh, which has to be uphold and maintained, yeah, uh, or sample even, yeah, because in certain circumstances, uh, uh, this chi uh, also represents Chinese yang. And now, but this one zo, uh, it's cognate as we have uh, sp uh, as it's not cognate, but it's amorphous. Uh, uh, with the uh, character for oaths, which we have mentioned yesterday, yeah? So this is something which, and this part here, means past, ancient times. So something which has been inherited from before, yeah? And so these two, yeah? They are in a, but they form a, a pair and sometimes an opposition. They can emerge together as one word, or they can emerge together like independently. Not together, so independently. And finally, just to add uh, another complication here, uh, we can see that uh, these two, these two types of ritual, uh, they are again connected uh, with the two categories, or maybe two ethnicities, or maybe two so two classes, or two social strata uh, within the Tango society. One is Lehi. And the other is me. These are two basic denominations of the Tango people. So again, there is also uh, uh, some distribution here. Uh, so sometimes we see the uh, rituals, the Alhidzo, for example, the ancient rituals of the Lhi. Or sometimes we see the uh, Miti, yeah, the uh, rituals and the laws and samples of the me people. Now this me is the, is a greater denominator. It implies or encompasses uh, the Tangut people altogether. Uh, whereas this lehi probably, probably means or implies the ruling part of the society. And this second Tangut language which we cannot understand. Uh, as we have mentioned before. Uh, some scholars, some colleagues, for example, Nyehuni and others, and I, I actually agree with that. Uh, it's the language of those Lehi people. And they emerge separately, uh, or sometimes even maybe in an opposition to me, in, in the works like certainly Yihai or others. And so again, this, is, uh, this whole situation is kind of complicated, I would even say hectic. Yeah? So 
so far we have observed uh, as much, uh, but still I myself personally find it a little bit confusing how all those things should be incorporated uh, or connected with each other. That's task for the future. I have tried to uh, write a piece on that, but I uh, wouldn't say that it was particularly successful. Just to see how I'm keeping up. So, Lahi and Udik talk about yeah. those are the same. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, that, that, uh, that's one thing. Uh, and therefore, uh, but all of those, yeah, uh, all of those elements, they sort of constitute in general, yeah, what we call Tangut culture and, uh, of course, Tangut religion. Uh, Buddhism uh, also finds its place uh, somewhere here, because uh, Buddhism probably, yeah, uh, it belongs to the category of key, yeah. We have never seen in the texts that any Buddhist ritual uh, would be ever identified as Dzo. It's, in most cases, I, at least the ones which I can think of, it's always key. Yeah. Also, in the Buddhist texts, yeah, it's always me language, and never he language. Uh, also, and for the actually for the Confucian texts, it's the same. Uh, the domain of Lihi uh, seems to be the Tangut national ideology. All those odes, uh, stories about cranes, about uh, a girl with a sun-like face, and uh, how do you say that? Uh, silver hips uh, or silver. Belly, I think. Uh, or, you know, that, uh, uh, that sort of thing still belongs here. Uh, whereas linguistically, yeah, other stuff, yeah, it generally is in the uh, domain of me language. Uh, now, if we turn to the actual translations, yeah, of the Buddhist texts, then we will find out, yeah, then, then again, yeah, why, can, why we can read it, yeah? That's because it is all in the me language and not in the Lhi, because if it were translated into Lhi, then there would be, I think, no way for us to understand it. And nothing whatsoever ever was translated into Lhi, it's always, uh, it's always uh, a tango genuine stuff. So. Sorry, if we can't read Lhi, how do we know the girl has a sunlit face and a... Sunlit well, that's because <laughs> the characters are the same, right? So ca characters, we can look up I had to ask that question, no man has yeah. that question. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. Because, you see, it's the same tangled characters, right? So we can look those up in the dictionary, yeah, and their meanings. So when we get those, we just go one by one, we, and then after we got it, then uh, we have, like, gut feelings, and we try to put this all together one way or another. Uh, but this is, uh, I mean, we can more or less get an idea of what it says in general. Uh, but I myself will never dare... Uh, at least so far, and probably never, uh, to dare to call it like a real translation. It's a paraphrase that probably it speaks about this or that. Uh, in the Tangut mythology, one can even discover parallels you know, with the uh, 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 mythical motives uh, from, let's say, uh, Tibetan Burman speaking people of. Uh, Sichuan and uh, like in this adjacent area between Sichuan and Tibet and further down to Burma. I mean, uh, those are, they're, they're parallels, of course. Uh, but the problem with the uh, Alhi language is such that uh, uh, we sometimes have trouble even identifying uh, the subjects and predicates. Okay, you said it's in the same character. Yeah. So. I ask a very basic question. So there are two languages, but they're written in the same script. Yeah. So how do you know when you're reading one and not the other? Uh, very easy. Uh, because when you read me language, you understand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but the, it's. Uh, I was trying to save that for the language class yesterday, but uh, there are very uh, several ways to identify. Uh, basically. Uh, uh, so you can say. I just. You've answered the question. Uh, but really very easy, because uh, Tangut verbs normally in the Mi language, it's standard Tibet Burman uh, uh, thing. I mean, uh, there is, uh, the verbs are prefixed. Uh, they take the agreement markers, uh, but in, and it's SOV, uh, sentence structure. Uh, whereas in the Lahi language, it's not like this. And how it is, uh, I will not dare say uh, for the moment. Uh, 
this is the test for the future, uh, for the future, and I guess uh, it's very challenging. I personally enjoy it, but I must admit that my own achievement here is uh, less than uh, that is not satisfactory. So uh, there are many things which uh, there are a lot of things of more or less this manner which still deserve. I mean, deserve scholarly attention. Does, does this mean that a given set of Characters can be read, and they might be the same phonetically and so on, but they can be read on two different registers. No. Is that what that means? Mm -hmm. uh, it's like a throat singer with two, I mean, is it uh, like two uh, overlapping, uh, I guess it's semantics, or however one, I mean, I, how can you tell that? I think we're uh, close to Valerie's point. I don't know the language well enough to ask uh, an educated well, person. Uh, I'm just curious. Uh, well, me too, but the problem... <laughs> uh, <clears throat> how to say that? Uh, basically, uh, we have, I think,